All right, welcome back to the Sportsman Zone. Time for some track and field, greatest sport in the world. Day one of Jamaica's National Senior and Junior Championships got underway at the National Stadium in Kingston on Thursday morning with periodic torrential rain and heavily overcast skies threatening to dampen the occasion. Many fans were already in a gloomy mood following the announcement late Wednesday evening that five-time Olympic champion Elaine thompson Hira withdrew from the trials due to a recurring Achilles injury, meaning she will not get the opportunity to defend any of her titles in Paris this August. She has, however, vowed to fight her way back to competition again. This is what she posted on social media. It's never fun sharing news like this, but at the New York Grand Prix, I felt something in the race and still insist to push. Couple steps to the line, I realized something is really wrong. I sat on the ground because I couldn't apply any pressure to the leg whatsoever as I was carried off the track. I went quickly to get some medical checkup and, to, and found out that I have a small tear on my Achilles tendon. Funny enough, I got back home with a strong mindset to keep pushing and prepare for my national trials. Another shot at my third Olympic Games, but the leg wouldn't allow me to. It's a long road, but I'm willing to start over and keep working and to make a full recovery and resume my track career. I am hurt and devastated to be missing the Olympics this year, but at the end of the day, it's sports and my health comes first. Not the birthday gift I was hoping for, but, um, but God, whatever you have in store for me, I will wait and I will still continue to work towards my goals that I haven't achieved just yet. I will be definitely watching, hopefully from the stands, and cheer my country, Jamaica on. I will be back, says Elaine Thompson Hira. Lance and Mariah, she celebrates her 32nd birthday on Friday. Yes. That's tomorrow. Um, I was at the Stadium East Field on Tuesday and there were some folks um, filming a documentary. I think they are from England. And one of them came over to me and she said, well, no, that was not, it was the male who said this, not the female. The female said something else, which I'll probably tell you about later on. Um, but he said, did you know that Friday is Elaine's birthday? Um, and I said, yes, I'm very much aware. And he said, wouldn't it be amazing if, the entire stadium could just sing her happy birthday. That would make such great TV. And I said, yes, it would make such great TV, but I'm not sure she's turning up. Mm. Mm, yeah, not the type of news anybody who looks on at Elaine, anybody who likes track and feel Ricardo would want to hear. Um, I saw it yesterday afternoon. I think you posted it in the group. I heard somebody say it and then I was going to post it in our Zoom group and then you of course had it there already and I was like oh yeah Ricardo would have um, known the news and shared it with us. So for me it's not what anybody wanted. It's not the type of news that you look forward to on uh, just a couple days before trials or on the eve of Jamaica's trials so for me I will say that I was devastated when I saw it I felt it for her when I read that message because we all know what has happened with Elaine Correa from the um, breakup with the Stephen Francis team the MVP uh, club to her injuries as well when she competed the way she managed and then that inspirational um, for me, that would always remain etched in my mind when she did, when she wrote all the times and what she wanted to achieve and she went on to do it. I was here working for Sportsmax as well. And to me, that is a moment when it comes to the Olympics that will forever be one of my favorites. So just not having Elaine compete because of injuries and, of course, whatever she's going through, to me, that was heartbreaking. And it's not the type of news I would have wanted to hear. Yeah, well, the second reigning Olympic champion to be missing Paris with an Achilles tendon injury, Yulimar Rojas, the reigning champion in the triple jump from Venezuela and world record holder back in April pulled out with an Achilles injury as well. So Elaine is the second um, world star 
in a couple of months to uh, suffer this kind of tragedy. A shattering story for any Elaine Thompson Hero fan um, who stretched beyond Jamaica because she's a global star and one of my favorite athletes of all time. So this is really difficult. The only thing is that you kind of expected that it would be problematic given how the last few months have been for her. Yeah. So um, really devastating news. And I'm certainly hoping for her that she will, as she says, um, keep fighting and uh, claw her way back to you know, resuscitating her career because I, I, I don't think Elaine Thompson era is finished. Mm -hmm. I think she has enough quality, if injury free, to be as potent as we had seen her four years ago. Yeah, and you know, interesting. So I think a lot of individuals are disappointed and in some case devastated, not for Elaine Thompson here, the individual, the person, but they are devastated because they see Elaine Thompson here being out of the Jamaican trials and ultimately the Olympic Games as a sign that Jamaica may struggle at the Olympic Games. I am devastated for Elaine Thompson Hira, um, who, given the heights that she has gotten to and to see her struggling the way she has over the last three years, would be difficult for any individual to have to deal with. And, of course, for her, because of her stature, it comes with um, consistent media pressure. Um, and that has to be difficult for any human being to handle because and for me Lance and Mariah I believe that Jamaica's printing will be fine I believe that Jamaica's women's printing is in great hands and I think we will see that at the national championships this weekend and I think for the individuals who are devastated because they believe that Jamaica will struggle at the Olympic Games may not miss Elaine Thompson at the end of the trials but for me I will still be devastated for the individual, regardless of what happens at the National Stadium over the next few days. And I expect some spectacular things to happen at the National Stadium over the next few days. Yeah. Um, when you say that, Ricardo, and I get what you're saying, we're expecting new athletes to come to light. And you keep talking about these spectacular things that I can't wait for it to come to light so that we can have a discussion because I don't like to be kept in the dark about all these spectacular things that he's been talking about. But we'll wait. I, I tend to have patience. But for me, Elaine is somebody that has created like a space in the hearts of so many people. And I think that's where it hits um, the most and it hurts the most because you're used to knowing that she's going to be lining up there. She's going to put out a particular type of performance and it's going to be one that's going to end in a medal. She also has these historical achievements, Ricardo, that we're all looking forward to see her achieve. And to me, Age is always a factor, like whether or not people want to accept it and say you're only as old as you feel and all of that. When it comes to sport, and Shelly Ann Fraser Price goes in a different category because she's one of a kind, so let me just put that aside there. But, I mean, Elaine has been suffering with injuries, and it's something that she as well, I'm sure, will be thinking about in the back of her mind. You know, you talk about a birthday. With every birthday, you sit and you reflect about what you've achieved and how you go about. You don't know how your body responds. And for me, all those different things in the back of my mind, I hope I live to see her perform and compete at another Olympics. And you know, interesting, the Caribbean women have done very well in the sprints, um, well into their 30s. Merle Inati ran 10.74 yeah. as a 36-year-old, 35, 36-year-old. Um, Chandra Stewart ran 10.8 as I think a 37-year-old. Um, Veronica Campbell-Brown went pretty late. We're seeing Shelley and Fraser Price and Merle Inati yes. um, ran, what, 10.99 at 40 years old yeah. Yeah. and 11.09 at 44 years old. So there's a history of Caribbean women doing well, um, well into their 30s. And so um, for Elaine Thompson Hero, when she thinks about the fact that she'll be 36, come the LA Olympic Games, she will be thinking, well, all hope is not lost. If I can yeah. get myself healthy, then there's always that possibility. But yes, it's, it is tough to see her not even have the opportunity um, to attempt 
a defense of any of her titles, not even to get to the Jamaican trials to see if she can get on the team to Paris. And yeah, we here at Sportsmax really want to wish Elaine all the very best. And because, happy birthday tomorrow. Yes, and happy birthday tomorrow as well. Yeah? All right. Today's piece building up to this summer's Olympic Games is with Gerard Morisili, who has his eyes on Paris. This is Paris wants to watch. We turn our attention to sweet, sweet TNT, where lovers of the red and black flag pin the majority of their track Olympic medal aspirations on a 30-year-old from the smallest borough in the Twin Island Republic, Point 14. Jareem Richards first garnered international attention at the 2017 World Championships in London, where he copped 200-meter bronze, narrowly missing out on silver in a photo finish with South Africa's Wade Van Niekerk, both men clocking 20.11 seconds and missing out on gold by two hundredths of a second. That feat established Richards as one of the rising stars of the Caribbean. However, two years later, he missed out on the World Championship final in Doha and then in his Olympic debut at the delayed Tokyo Games in 2021, he reached the final but finished down the field in eighth position. Having won back-to-back -back Commonwealth 200 meter titles in 2018 and 2022, Richards took on the 400 meters at the 2023 World Championships in Budapest, Hungary. He ended fourth in his semi-final, clocking 44.76 seconds, the third fastest time of his career, but it wasn't enough to get the sprinter into the final. Richards, who won the World Indoor 400 meter title in 2022, has been contesting both 200 and 400 this season, but hasn't yet finalized which event he'll contest in Paris. It doesn't really matter to me, honestly. Um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm only to do as well as I, am, I, I could do. It doesn't matter who's in the race, who's in the field, because I could only control me. You know, so I try to always stay focused on what I could do and not who else is there, who is in the field, who's in shape. It doesn't really matter. When asked about his mindset ahead of Paris, especially given the setbacks of prior years due to injury, Richards is leaning on his mental fortitude to see him through. My mental fortitude definitely comes from a lot of prayer. I trust in God, so what is to be is to be. Um, but also I have a sports psychologist, Lisa Mohammed Watts, that I talk to on every single Wednesday. And she's also a very religious person, so she also strengthens my, my faith. You know, um, I got injured last year and last year I think I was in the best shape of my life. You know, so this year I'm just trying to replicate it or do even better. And thank God that right now I'm still healthy. I'm running fast and I'm just going to trust the process and what is to be is to be, no pressure. Whether it's over 400 meters or half that distance, Jareem Richards is spurred on by strong faith and a mental toughness battle-tested through the ups and downs of athletics. In his own words, what is to be will be. That's all we have for today for Paris Wants to Watch. More to come as we chart our course for the City of Love.